All right. So today's lesson on basic geometry is about area, perimeter, volume, surface area. I expect that you're going to set it up correctly and then use your calculator to help with the calculating part at the end. But I want to go through some basic shapes that you need to know the area formula for, or maybe perimeter or circumference or whatever it might be, as well as how to find the volume and surface area of some basic shapes. So let's start, first of all, with two-dimensional figures. How do I find the area and perimeter of these shapes? So let's start with a nice, easy shape, a rectangle. We could go into a long definition, and there's other ones, and there's properties involved with the rectangles. But you have a sense that it has how many sides? Yay. What's the angle in each corner? And opposite sides are congruent. Now, technically, a, rec a square is a special rectangle. A square meets all the requirements of a rectangle. It's just a special rectangle. Yay? So we often talk about a rectangle having length and width. So when we talk about the area, what's the formula for area of a rectangle? Length times width. When we talk about perimeter, the basic definition of perimeter is just to add all the sides. If we have sides that are the same length, there's sometimes a shortcut to that, right? So would it be wrong just to add all the sides? No. If one side you know, then the opposite side you know because they are congruent, so you could add them all up. But for a rectangle, we could also use the definition twice the length plus twice the width. I know this is all review. I know that. But we also need that review if we haven't seen it for a while. So since we talked about it, let's talk about a special rectangle. What's the only difference between a square and a rectangle? All four sides are congruent, right? We often use the word congruent in geometry. Did you know that? So congruent means they're exactly the same. It seems like a special geometry word to give it an extra stamp of approval that they're exactly the same. Often we use the letter S to represent one side. If I know one side of a square, could you find the area of that square? This is where we get the word square from. So the area is you take one side and what do you do? You square it. That's where that definition comes for that exponent too. I'm just going to use capital A for area and capital P for perimeter. So I'm not going to spell it out every time. And if I know one side of a square to find the perimeter, you take that one side times four. Could you go add, 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 add? Yes. So the definition of perimeter still is to add all the sides. So we have a rectangle, a square. Can I do another quadrilateral? Do you know what quadrilateral means? It means four sides. Have you ever heard of that word, trapezoid? Do you know the definition of a trapezoid? A trapezoid has four sides. And two of the sides are parallel. That's it. So these are the parallel sides. And to show that they're parallel, we put little arrows on them. Oh, I said the same number there. Base one, that should be a one. To find the area of a trapezoid, does that look like a familiar shape? A trapezoid doesn't have to have exactly that shape. Sometimes a trapezoid kind of looks like a square with a little ramp on it, you know? That's also the only definition of a trapezoid that it has four sides and two sides are parallel. So it can look like this, but often it looks like this. If you ever watch a hockey game, they talk about the there's a trapezoid behind the goalie net. That's the only place where the goalie can touch the puck in hockey now. Can't go in the corners. That's called the trapezoid. Do you remember how to find the area of the trapezoid? The area is one half 
you add the bases. The bases are always the sides that are parallel, and then you multiply it times the height. So one half the bases times the height. Do you know what that for, uh, formula should remind you of? The area of a triangle. Do you know the area of a triangle is half the base times the height? It's just that we have more than one base. It's half the basis times the height. You're going to be required to have this memorized. So I'm trying to give you hints, right, that you know and how to memorize this. So we got a rectangle. We got a square. We got a trapezoid. I left out a quadrilateral. <coughs> Does anyone know of a quadrilateral I have not written down yet? A rhombus. I like that. I wasn't even thinking of that. How about like two? Let's do rhombus. Do you know the definition of a rhombus? First of all, it's a quadrilateral. But all four sides are the same length. But are the angles 90 degrees? That's what makes it a rhombus. If these angles were 90, then it would be a square. Now, believe it or not, to find the area of a rhombus, you need the diagonals. A diagonal is when you go corner to corner. And the area is one half the product of the diagonals. So if you go corner to corner and corner to corner, those are called diagonals. One half the product of the diagonals is the area. Up here, I didn't say perimeter. There's no special formula here. You have to add all, add all sides. Same thing here. Here you could have, if you have, you have to add all the sides. Because it's a rhombus, all sides are the same length. So if you know one side, you could just go 4s. I was thinking of another quadrilateral. Quadrilateral that I haven't said. I love the word rhombus. Do you know that in kindergarten, those are, these are the words they're using in kindergarten? So like rhombus is something that like my daughter would see and go, oh, that's a rhombus. In kindergarten, right? So it's getting all the way down there. Do you remember when you heard the word rhombus for the first time? It was 10th grade, right? Yeah, there you go. Ninth grade. <laughs> hey, can I give you another one? It's called... Uh, Parallelogram. A parallelogram also has four sides, and opposite sides are parallel, and they're the same length. To find the area of a parallelogram, it is simply the base times the height. And I want you to notice, whenever we use the word height, it always makes an angle of 90 degrees. If a, if a side is slanted, it doesn't make an angle of 90. That is not the height. It has to make an angle of 90 degrees to be the height of that shape. In the perimeter, again, we're going to add all sides. I'm going to take my paper and go on the back side now. We're not done yet. I need to know more shapes. What shapes have I left out? Larissa? What? A what? 3D shape. Oh, yeah, yeah, but... It, we, we deal with 3D shapes. We're going to be talking about surface area and volume. And we're going to get there. How about 2D? Sometimes they call them flat. How many more flat? Circle! We have not done. So 
So for a circle, how do you find the area of a circle? It's pi r squared. How do you find the circumference? There's actually two definitions for circumference. If you have the radius, you would say 2 pi r. If you have the diameter, you would just say pi d. Because 2r is the diameter. Circumference is a fancy name for perimeter for a circle. Keep going. What's another shape? A flat shape. A 2D shape that I have not said yet. Triangle. For a triangle, notice again the height of a triangle is when it meets at the angle 90 degrees. So for a triangle, the base and the height meet at 90. That's how you can tell the base and the height of a triangle, is when the two meet at 90 degrees. And when that happens, the formula for a triangle is half the base times the height. The perimeter is to add all sides. Now the other flat shapes that you've been taught about, I'm not going to go into any detail with. And those are sides that are greater than four. Like if you had a side that had five sides, you know what that's called? It's called a pentagon. <laughs> that's crazy, right? Maybe I should do it because you guys just worried me there for a second. Okay, so uh, pentagon has five sides. Again, I'm not going to tell you what they do in kindergarten with those words like pentagon, hexagon, octagon. So thank you. I think that you should have a better memory. Do you know what pentagon looks like? A standard pentagon means all the sides and angles are equal. It looks like a pentagon. Do you know where the most famous pentagon is in the world? Is where our defense, right? The American defense building is called the uh, Pentagon. Maybe the second most famous Pentagon in the world is when you play baseball or softball, and you want to you want to touch that to like win, right? To get runs. That's probably me. Is that the, maybe that's more famous? The one home plate. Both are pentagons, right? Do you know how to find the area of it? If these shapes have a center to them, if you connect it to an angle of ninety degrees with one of the sides. I've never pr pronounced this right. I know other people have pronounced it better than me. How have you heard that pronounced? Have you never seen that word before in your life? I said like apothem, apothem. I, I've heard different things. The distance from the center to one of the sides where it makes 90, the area needs that. The area is one half the perimeter times the apothem. So if you add up all the sides and you multiply that times the apothem and take half of it, that's the area. Now that formula is actually the area of any regular sized polygon. That's what they call it when it gets bigger than four polygons. So I guess I have to like make sure that you understand these two. What, what's six sides? Yeah. Do you know what that shape looks like? I'm not going to do this very well freehand, but I'm going to do my best. I just go for it. Yes? Hexagon? It's the same formula. Where you, the perimeter is you add all sides. And these polygons have a center. If you connect to any side and make 90 degrees, that distance from the center to the side is called that apothem. I'm sure it's pronounced differently. I have to Google, see what they say. You know, Google helps you pronounce words. Sometimes it's right. I'll have to do that after this video. Do you know any other polygon? Famous one? I'm not going to put down. Seven sides is called a, a heptagon. Like a heptathlon. The... 
eight sides. Do you know what an octagon looks like? Hey, I like that. That's right. So the most famous octagon is the stop sign. I was trying to think what the most famous hexagon is. Likely, if you love bees, that when you look at beehives, the shapes that people always draw beehives in, I don't, I've never actually like looked under with a microscope, but I'm assuming that if you draw it with hexagons, that's what a beehive looks like. Is that right? Is that, is that right? Mm -hmm. I've never, have you ever seen a beehive up close? Yeah. Are they all hexagons? Because whenever you see it, like in cartoons and stuff, they always draw with hexagons. <laughs> so an octagon is a stop sign. And it has how many sides? Again, you probably are far better and more artistic than I am to try to make that look like that. It's the same idea. The area is one half. The perimeter times the bottom. Do you know what 10 sides is called? I'm not going to draw it. Oh, what happened? 10 sides? 10 sides is called uh, decagon. Deca is like desa. They don't know why they have a soft C. You know how we have the word decimal and other things that have that D-E-C? They don't have a soft C there. It's called a decagon, but it's that same. It's probably Latin, maybe Greek, I don't know. But it means 10. Like our decimals has that 10 base, right? Yay? Who knows? How about 12 sides? You know what that's called? It's called a dodecagon. Almost like a dinosaur or something. A dodecagon is a, it's 12 sides. Often when you have nine sides, it's called a nine gone. I know. If you have 11 sides, 11 gone. If you have something more than 12, they just call it like by the number of sides. 13 gone, 14 gone, 5, 15 gone. I didn't mean to do that, but you guys are acting like you didn't know what a pentagon, an octagon, and a hexagon were, and you're going to graduate in a couple weeks. So I felt, I got to give you, you know, got to give you something. Okay, that's area and perimeter. I also want to show you volume and surface area. So whenever we deal with the word volume, it means it's three-dimensional. It means the capacity of that object, like how much it holds. The volume always comes down to two types of shapes, three-dimensionally. That would be a prism or a pyramid. Have you heard those two words before? Yes. Prism and pyramid. How you can tell the difference between the two, you ready? A prism has two bases. So a prism has two bases in all non-base sides. So if they're not the base, the other sides are always rectangles. So if the bases are rectangles, that would mean all the sides are rectangles. You ready for my non-artistic way to show you something? So I'm not artistic. You'll just deal with it. So here's an example of a prism. I should have Natalie draw these for me. Are you good at prisms? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that isn't bad, right? That's pretty good for a math guy, right? So why why is this a prism? Now, what can get confusing is that sometimes a prism can be on its side, right? Because normally you think the base should be on the bottom, correct? In this example, the base is not on the the bottom. The bases are actually the triangles. And how you can tell is that all non-bases are what shape? Can you see all the rectangles there? The triangles can never be the non-base. If you see a triangle and a base, that has to be the base because the other sides have to be rectangles. So in this example, the triangles are bases. That's called a triangular prism. How many bases are there here? 
two, and all the other sides are what shape? Rectangle. Yay? Another famous one to draw is called a rectangular prism. Like I'm just trying to show off to you now. This, this was a little wonky, this last side right there. Why is this a rectangular prism? All the sides are rectangles, aren't they? So because every side is rectangles, you could actually pick any two to be the basis. They have to be sides that are opposite of each other, but this is called a rectangular prism. How about another famous one? Do you know another famous one's called? You didn't think prisms could be famous. I know, am I embarrassing you that I can do those? What's this shape called if all the sides are the same length? This is called a cube. That's probably the most famous prism, a cube. This is called a rectangular prism. It's always named after the base. So whatever the shape of the base is, is what it's called. Another famous prism, I'll do this here on the left side here. I, these I don't draw well at all. A cylinder. Crazy? As much as that is, yeah, I, when I help my daughter with her homework in kindergarten, how do I spell cylinder again, Daddy? In kindergarten. When she's given a three-dimensional shape and she has to name it. So I don't know where finger painting went and stuff, but that's the kind of, I know. So I have to spell it out for her. She doesn't know how to spell the word cylinder. Isn't that crazy in kindergarten? Doesn't know how to spell cylinder. What are they teaching her? Those are the most famous prisms. Why is a cylinder a prism? Because the top and the bottom are circles, right? It has two bases, they're just circles. Now in this case, it doesn't follow the sides are rectangles, but if you undo it, the belly actually does make a rectangle that goes around the, so those are called the lateral side. But to find the volume of any prism, it's the same formula every time. Volume is the area of one base times the height. And sometimes we break it down like this. That big B means the area of the base times the height, always. So if it's a triangular prism, you find the area of the triangle and the height is always the distance between the bases, even if it's on its side. So to find the volume of any prism, it's the area of the base times the height. Now, do you know what a pyramid is? There is, where's the most famous one? In Egypt, right? Now, that's not what all bases look like. I mean, all pyramids look like. You know what shape the bottom of that pyramid is, the famous one in Egypt? I think it's a square. I'm not good at drawing pyramids. I don't even know how, if I'm even going to attempt it. I'm going to say one base. I can write that down. And all non-bases are triangles. It says bases. So that's a good indicator to know if it's a prism or a triangle. A pyramid obviously comes up to a point, right? It has one base, and those triangles on the side come up to a point. Do you want me to try to draw a pyramid? I guess it's going to, like, just depress me to try to draw. Do you know how to draw a pyramid? Can you draw a square pyramid? Yeah. Right here. Right here? Right there, yeah. Right. I was trying to start with the base, but I know I'm off. Natalie is amazingly talented, right? AP art, right? Yeah. And calculus and FFA queen, all of it. <laughs> I'm not sure what she can't do. And she's going to Chico State. Yay. Yay. Go Cougar. No, go Wildcats. Wildcats. Got my cats wrong. Okay, it's really tiny, but it's there. Why did you draw it so tiny? I'm sorry. I'll all right, it. I'll forgive you. <laughs> In a triangle, a pyramid does not have to have a square bottom. It could have a rectangle bottom. It could have a triangle bottom. 
If it has a circle bottom, we have a special name for it. You know what it's called? A pyramid that has a circle bottom is called a... <laughs> All right, I'm not going to judge it, but I feel I might have played you up a bit, Natalie, in terms of drawing a, a pyramid. I, I like put you on a pedestal, and then I get I the pyramid that you see. Night, All right. <laughs> the good news is the packets that you're practicing, it's all like software drawn, so it's not. You don't have to worry about me or Natalie trying to draw right. these pyramids for you. How you, so we talked about a special one. It's called a... Uh, a cone? I can't draw it. I only attempt. So a cone has what kind of a, a base to it? A circle, and it comes up. It looks like a Dixie cup. You know what a Dixie cup is? You know when you're really thirsty and you're hoping that place you go into, right, at summertime, has like one of those, gr those gurgly things, and you pull the cup out, and it comes to a point. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All right, if you don't, you don't. That's called a, that's a cone, that shape. Or maybe you like a snow cone. You ever do that with icy? A little red or blue or something. That's usually that's like a cone too. That's a, or I have an ice cream cone, without the circular part on top, just the actual cone. No ice cream. Hey, how do you find the volume of a pyramid? It is very similar to a prism, with one little difference at the end. The volume is the area, and there's only one base. The area of the base times the height, but there's one difference at the end. You have to divide the end by three. That's what makes a difference between a pyramid and a prism. You could put three pyramids together to make that prism, in other words. It's one-third the size. So the key difference at the end is just divide it by three. Sometimes it's a fraction, and they put a three on the bottom. But ultimately, it's the area of the base times the height divided by three. So, three-dimensional shapes break down into what two categories? Prism or pyramid. There's actually one special three-dimensional shape that doesn't break down that way, and it's called a sphere, and it has a special formula. That's a ball, right? So we'll get to that in a second. Surface area. So to find the surface area, you find the area of all the faces and add them up. So it matters how many faces, what kind of shape you have, how many faces it has. But you have to find the area of each face. Sometimes faces have the same size so that you could just double up an answer to make it quicker. I talked about a sphere. Watch me try to draw a sphere. I don't know. <laughs> I tried. See that? See how I tried to add some dimension to it? I tried. Whatever, right? The formula, you have to know the radius of that sphere. The volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And the surface area is 4 pi r squared. Natalie, do you know that the derivative of the volume is the surface area? Look at the formula for volume. If you took the derivative of it, guess what you get? Isn't that a cool calculus connection yeah. to a sphere? Mm -hmm. All right. That's just, you know, me and my calculus friends. Mm -hmm. All right. So guess what we just did is that we now have a reference sheet. Remember how we had a reference sheet for functions? Aren't you glad to have one or two sheets where you have a place to go to when you forget, when you're in Alex and it says do these kind of things? So what I need you to do right now is I need you to get one packet each that's on the table. 